When it comes to car salespeople, it seems like there are a lot of comedians out there. What did you do over President's Day weekend? Dress up like Abe Lincoln? Where do you get your pomade? A wholesaler? Who's this guy? Your boss? If anyone knows how to take a joke, or what it's like to be misunderstood, it's a car salesperson. And the ethanol industry can relate. A lot of people have ridiculous ideas about renewable fuels like ethanol, too. Some claim that ethanol performs poorly. Others say it may harm your engine. Some even say ethanol is a government boondoggle. But today, we have an opportunity to clarify some of the biggest misconceptions your customers might have about ethanol. It's the Tell Me Something I Don't Know About Ethanol Challenge, an interactive multimedia edutainment experience featuring surprise guest appearances from a panel of illustrious experts from a variety of fields. So, hands on buzzers, everyone. It's time to start the quiz. And when we're done, maybe we can talk about how to convince your hilarious in-laws that wearing a gorilla costume is not part of your job. Question one, what professional racing series uses ethanol in its cars? A, NASCAR, B, NHRA Drag Racing, C, Indy Racing League, D, all the above? The answer is D, all of the above. My name is Dr. Eric Warren. I'm the director of competition at Richard Childress Racing. Uh, my primary job is to make sure our race cars are fast every week. So I think anyone that puts fuel on an engine uh, wants to get more performance out of it. So we demonstrate that every day in NASCAR with the millions of miles we, we run with it to show that it's safe. Uh, if we can put it in our engines and get more performance out of it, then certain, certainly uh, American consumers can do so as well. You know, it also Ethanol is a renewable energy resource, and so it gives back to American farmers and American jobs and American economy. So if you're going to increase the performance of your car, it's a renewable resource, you provide back to the American economy. Again, we see it as a win-win scenario. Question two. Ethanol is in what percentage of gasoline sold in the U.S.? A, 30%, B, 95%, C, 15%, D, 45%. The answer is B, 95%. All right, well, I'm Darren Hefty, and this is my brother Brian. We're with Ag PhD. We farm ourselves. We raise corn and soybeans and wheat, and just learning uh, how other farmers are doing things, and then looking at market demand, too, around the country for corn, especially. Uh, it's pretty interesting when we've got ethanol plants right around us. People say, where does your corn go? Well, it either goes to livestock or it goes right to ethanol plants. And, and for mostly, our farm is hauling corn directly to ethanol plants. It's been fantastic for our corn market. Uh, but we've also been burning ethanol in our vehicles for 20 years as well, and that's been uh, pretty educational as we're speaking to people around the country and, and around the world. You live in the country and you've used a lot of these things in lots of vehicles for many years and a lot of older vehicles too and not had any problems. Uh, yeah, everything's been great, so we've been really happy. I'm, I was just thinking about a 1969 truck that we run and we've had 10% ethanol in that for many years. And you know, if a 69 truck will handle it, just about everything should. Question three. The ethanol industry produces more fuel than what the U.S. imports from which foreign country? A, Iran, B, Venezuela, C, Saudi Arabia, D, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. For over 40 years, the United States has been importing oil and it's changed our nation's foreign policy. We've exported trillions of dollars of, of money to pay for this oil to a lot of governments and regimes that don't really support our values. Some of that money's gone to terrorists as well. But worse, it distorts and pulls our foreign policy. Our fighting in the Middle East has been all about oil. The Gulf War was about oil. Gulf War II, the invasion of Iraq, was about oil. Even the action in Afghanistan was indirectly about oil and our actions in Saudi Arabia. So that dependence on imported oil has made us the target of terrorism, distorted our foreign policy, and cost the American economy trillions of dollars over the last four decades. Every gallon of ethanol that we put in our automobile tanks 
is one less gallon of imported oil to be paid for by the American taxpayer with money going abroad and tailing with it all of the dependencies of the United States in our foreign policy. Well, I hope every person who's looking at a new automobile will consider a flex fuel vehicle because this is a, this is a vehicle which is able to use 85% ethanol and gasoline. And, and that means that you're able to buy American fuel, 85% of it guaranteed American grown right here, produced right here in America. That's money that stays in the American economy and it keeps our country less dependent on foreign sources of petroleum. Question four. How much does the ethanol industry receive in federal government subsidies every year? A, $24 million. B, $2 million. C, $0. D, $240 billion. The answer is C, zero dollars. I'm Jeff Broin, uh, executive chairman and founder of POET. POET is one of the largest ethanol producers in the country. Uh, in addition, I'm chairman of Growth Energy. Uh, Growth Energy is an advocacy group and promotion group for ethanol in the U.S. So let's look back to the beginning of the industry. Uh, ethanol did have some incentives. We got tax incentives. Like a lot of other energy sector businesses received tax incentives early in their development. Uh, as we improved the technology, uh, we're able to let those incentives decrease and, and today we have no subsidies, ethanol receives no subsidies at all from the U.S. government, even though the oil industry still receives some subsidies. Bonus round question. In what year was the very first flex fuel vehicle built? A, 1908, B, 1976, C, 1984, D, 2001. The answer is A, 1908. Ethanol is a historic fuel. It's been used since the beginning of the automobile. Uh, the 1908 Model T was built to burn ethanol because of the octane level and the availability of it. Uh, not until 1921 when uh, leaded fuel came in was there any true com competition for uh, ethanol. We've done a lot of research into which fuels work best in cars. And so we've taken that position that ethanol is the way to go. Is it powerful? Yes. Is it clean? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. So how did you do? If you got a few wrong, don't feel bad. There's a lot of misinformation about ethanol going around. Just remember this. When you choose ethanol at the pump, you're not just choosing what's good for your wallet. You're choosing what's good for your car, your economy, your environment, and your country. Good going. If you want to learn even more about ethanol, visit growthenergy.org. Thanks for playing.